Hello, my sweet peeps. So, today it's another day of advanced English vocabulary masterclass for you. And in the end, you're going to have all the vocabularies to express your ideas fluently and confidently. And welcome back to Junto com o Nativo. I'm Daddy, and he's. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Start over, babe. Start <laughs> over. Hi, you, Daddy. You should have started <laughs> over the <once. laughs> I'm Daddy, that's Sal. Stop. You're that's welcome so to funny. another day. <laughs> you can keep it going. Yes. Oh, it's shit. a funny one, but <laughs> or you can start over. Okay, so uh, how's how's your day today? Are you having a good day? I am having a good day. Um, it's been a wonderful sunny day. I had worked on my pickup. Um, I've been having issues with, and finally got it running pretty good. So. It's been a good day. Okay. How about you, Saul? Yes, I had a good day also. And uh, it was a rainy day, but it, it was an enjoyable day with my family. And, and we had a barbecue together, and it was really good. Good, good. Yes, yeah, so, and uh, how's everybody? I hope everybody good. Yes. Good, good, good. Well, let's get started on our on our learning English of the day, and uh, glad to see everybody back. And let's have a little fun, huh? Yes, let's have a little fun today with phrasal verbs. So let's get started. You start with this master class with what? So with phrasal verbs, because as I told you before, uh, in other classes, native speakers love use phrasal verbs. And who didn't have the other classes, I can say again for you guys. We're going to start this third master class with phrasal verbs. Because native speakers use all the time. And knowing them, you will sound more fluent, more natural, and they will help you to understand native speakers. So you're going to learn the third group of phrasal verbs. Because we had the first class about that first of verbs, the second class, and now is the third class about phrasal verbs again. And in the end, we'll complete a quiz and then we we'll move on and learn another group of phrasal verbs. So let's get started with your third group. Number one. To rip off. So, off. Uh, it says, to pay a price that too high is too high or unfair. Or not get paid at all. I've had. Um, so, like, if you were to buy a car from somebody and they said it was a good car, you you bought it as is, you drive away and it breaks down, you got ripped off because it's a clunker. It's no good. So, or if someone came up and stole your wallet, you got ripped off. Um, you got anything to add to that? Yo, 
good job. Yes. Now I will explain uh, uh, to rip off. Yes. Uh, actually, the concepts, the how works the structure. And uh, so to rip off this number one, we use this when someone is selling something or buying something and the buyer feels that the price is too high compared to the value of whatever they are buying. For example, could you read this example? I can't believe I paid $200 for that. She ripped me off. She told everyone that I ripped her off, but it was it was a fair price. Oh, that mm -hmm. was the other person talking. Yeah, so that first one, this, uh, when you rip someone off, she ripped me off. And the other example, he read, uh, thinking about both examples. Uh, so the second, just because someone claims you rip them off, it doesn't necessarily mean that is true. Yes, and now number two. To wear out, to become damaged, weakened from age or use, to wear out. Like, I wore out my shoes. My toes are sticking out the ends. My soles are falling off. I have no more. I got to go get some new shoes. Or my paint is wearing out on my pickup because of the sun. And so I got to get a new paint job. And that would be weakened from the age or use because of the sun. So that would be that one. Oh, so go ahead. Yes. Saul. Great, this number two to wear out. So uh, we use this when something is damaged or weakened because of age, it's old, or because of use this, used this a lot, for example. Could you read it? Uh, you even got shoes on. I wore out my tennis shoes last summer. That's funny that you, you put that. Yes. That's exactly the example I used. Yeah, my tennis shoes. That's what mine used to look like when I was a kid. Oh, really? <laughs> One pair of shoes a year. No. Yes, if someone said that to me, I would assume it that they played a lot with the, the tennis last, last summer. They, they played so much with that tennis that, that they were damaged from mm -hmm. use, from continually playing tennis. We also use this in an adjective form it to be worn out. So it would be very common to say, I need to buy new tennis shoes because mine are worn out. I so, of out course. Yes, I wore what? out my shoes. Sorry. I yes. Sorry. I mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, of course, are because shoes is plural and we need the plural form of the verb should be mine, my tennis shoes are worn out. So both forms are very common. Number three. I had something to add to that worn out. You could say you're worn out too. I am um, working, I worked so hard, I'm wore out. And I'm just burned out, I'm wore out. So wore out works for you too. So the third, fourth, right? 
-hmm. to draw up, to prepare paperwork or contracts or agreements or proposals. I need to draw up my documents with my lawyer for uh, my house, selling my house. So I need to get some papers drawn up. Or uh, say, you could say draw up. I got to draw up some blueprints for the house I'm getting ready to build. Um, are you, let's see. Yeah, I think that's pretty good, huh? You you go ahead and take it over, so. Yes, great. So this number three to draw up is that uh, so we use this when you need to prepare paperwork and generally that paperwork is for a contract an agreement a proposal generally something that two people need to sign or agree on to make it official for example could you read those examples I asked my lawyer to draw up the papers. We're waiting for the bank to draw up the mortgage agreement. So mm -hmm. just another word for write or prepare. Yeah. Yeah, so I asked my lawyer to draw up the papers. Whenever you're dealing with a lawyer, the papers are going to be official to this, is a perfect time to use to draw up. Or you could say the second as he read, we're waiting for the bank to draw up the mortgage agreement. So that is not official documents that you need to sign and you can use the phrasal verb to draw up. Very good. Number four. <laughs> oh, see, to burn out. This is what I was saying earlier. To feel exhausted from prolonged stress or working too hard or playing too hard. All of the above. And so like, I, I do asphalt for a living. And so when I work 12 hours a day, Six days a week. I am burned out. I get burned out. Jeez, too much work. Yes. Great. Yes, this number four to burn out. This is a phrasal verb that has gotten a lot of attention recently, especially of with the pandemic, because to burn out. This is when you feel exhausted mentally or physically from prolonged stress of work, stress of a situation like a pandemic that we had before. And uh, there are some yet. And uh, also stress. So it's could be stress of, of a family situation like a divorce or illness, something that get uh, that is a, in a prolonged period, you can be stressed out for a day. When you burn out, it means you had this, that stress for a long period of time, several weeks, several months, or even several years. For example, could you read that? Uh, I'm burned out at my last job. I got burned out at my last job. Or you could be like, I'm burned out at my out after caring for my aging parents. <coughs> oh, okay, good. Yes, I was working so much yes, that it, I got into this pro, peri, period yes, uh, uh, as a prolonged stress. So, 
the second example here. Uh, what do you got? Yes, that is another that you can use this in a work situation. Also, burnout or in a personal situation as well. Number yeah. five. Yes. And that was one that I was bringing up with the uh, worn out, worn out and burned out when you think you're talking about work. Um, I'm worn out. So this one, this is number six. To look up to, so. To look up to, what's, uh, to, to admire or respect. So as in my uncle or my dad, I would look up to because they taught me a lot of life and I respect them very dearly as you would look up to your mom or your dad or even um, someone in politics. Some people look up to the people in politics. Or the, their, so I, I guess some people even look up to uh, athletes because they admire or they want to be like them. So I wanna be, I wanna be like Mike. Remember that one? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, Michael Jordan. Everybody <laughs> wants to be like Mike. So, yeah, go go ahead and go ahead and take over, Sal. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, wrote. I didn't. Uh, let me see. Ah, oh, yes, I didn't write. Uh, I'm yes. Good, you did before. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this number five to look up to someone. So notice we have two prepositions. Look up to and then someone. We use this when you admire someone or you respect someone. So I could say I look at up to him like a father. So, of course, I admire and respect my father and I'm comparing the situation to someone else. I look it up to him. I admired him like a father. The other example, I really look up to my boss. So, you admire your boss you respect your boss, you hold your boss in high regard, so you can use this in a work situation. You can look up to people and you can use this in a social situation, a family situation. You can have many different people in your life that you look up to for in different reasons. And now, the number six. To step, to step it up, or to just take a step, but no, she's meaning to step it up, as in, you need to work harder. Um, yeah, you did a good job on that, but could you step it up a little? Or, um, yeah, just to try harder, to work harder, to be faster, to just be more that everything you you are okay so oh, great give great, it all great yes this number six to step it up now that is the phrasal verb but we most commonly use it in the expression to step it up notice that it uh, it's very important to step it up uh, to step it up, this simply means to work harder or to try harder. So now you can say, uh, we need to step it up if we're going to meet the deadline. So you need, you have this deadline, you need to work harder. So it's the same as saying, we need to work harder 
if you're going to meet the deadline, is, is step it up. Now, right. what is this it in this expression? Well, the it would represent work or effort we need to step up our work, we need to step it up our effort, we step it up uh, our encouraging. You use it th that way, step it up because you sound like a native speaker. We have a really common expression with it is that is step it up. We have two words that is here. Step it up. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Um, that's what they meant as another level. Step it up another level. Step it up another level. Step it up another notch. As in that's what it was. That was what it's representing when it says step it up. Yep. Oh, Go good. Ahead. Yes. If you look at uh, a dial a notch is one move on the dial so it represents a little bit a small amount is step it up a notch is it's just like say step it up a little bit so that's just a common expression you need to step it up a notch if you want to meet the deadline so you can use it with uh, a notch, it's very common, or you could use it without, like the previous one. And now, the, the seven. The other. Well, I have one more thing, just one second. Um, there is a little verbal, um, verbal phrase that we say step down instead of step up. So when they say step down, though, it's it's not talking about work at that point. It's like if you're getting ready to get in a fight, you need to step down or or step off when you're in someone's face. Or So don't get those two confused with each other. Um, but yes, that one's pretty cool. Good to have. So anyways, all right, number seven, to hone in on or to pinpoint or to focus on something. Like, um, as a jet fighters, they're honing in on the, the, the enemy in front of them to shoot them down. Uh, we would say hone in um, when we're searching for somebody, we're honing in on them. Uh, like an in, um, oh. a dangerous person or something. They're honing in. If the circle's getting smaller. So, yeah, to focus in. So... Yeah, as a grid, it would be honing in. Oh, great. Uh, yes, go ahead, Saul. Yes, something else? No, I don't okay. think so. Okay. Yes, this number seven to hone in on. This is another two preposition phrasal verb. We have hone in on, hone in on something and this means to really focus on something to put all your attention on something specific for example if we want to get more customers we should really hone in on small business owners so maybe right now you you're not being very specific and you're looking at all customers, but you want to hone in on a specific segment of the population, small business owners. So you're going to focus on them. You're going to hone in on them. Another example, we, for a presentation, we need honey non in South America. So you could you read those ex examples? Yes, uh, it is. If we want to get customers, we should hone in on small business owners or 
uh, families. Or for the presentation, we should hone in on South America. Yes. So in the first one example, you're not so specific. You're looking all customers. Yeah, and when you want to hone in on in the specific uh, segments of population, for example, in Brazil, you need to focus on them in Brazil or in South America. About the second example, uh, for the presentation, we should hone in on South America. So maybe you uh, have a global company and you have branches all over the world. And for this specific presentation, you're going to hone in on a specific part of the world, South America. Yes, so number eight. To bring up, to begin a discussion on a specific topic, or um, as in, saw brought up you could say brought up or bring up she brought up discussing or honing in on south america so to bring up um you can also say uh yeah brought up i i brought up my children i raised up my children but bring up is in i'm going to bring up the fact that it's cold in the winter here and hot down there. So something like that. So go ahead, Saul. Oh, yes, great. Yes, this number eight, this is a must know phrasal verb to bring up. And this is when you begin a discussion as he read on a specific topic. For example, if you're in a staff meeting, it would be very common for the boss or whatever is leading the meeting. So say before we end the meeting, does anyone have anything to bring up? Does anyone have a specific topic they want to discuss? Does anyone have anything to bring up or after the meeting, you might tell another colleague, I didn't have a chance to bring up the marketing proposal. So you didn't have a chance to discuss this specific topic, the marketing proposal. Maybe you ran out of time. And now the number nine. To yeah. talk so in two. To talk someone into something. Now I know what those are. I didn't know what those were. To talk someone into something. Uh, to convince someone to do something. To, yeah, to get them to do whatever you need them to do by talking them into it. To getting them to do what you want by convincing them something somehow or some way. So as in she talked me into helping her move because probably she brought up, oh, I'll make dinner if you help me move. So that would be talking me into doing it because I'm like, well, what is it in for me? But, and then there's my team talked me into bringing up the bonus at the meeting. So, my team or my coworkers asked me to bring up or to talk them into giving us a raise or a bonus at the end of the year. As uh, the leader, you want to bring up any topic that, or talk to, <laughs> talk to your bosses um, and try to talk them into that we need to get new equipment or raises, like I was saying. Go ahead, Saul. Yes. So this number nine, uh, to talk into. 
end of the sentence is structure is to talk someone into something. And this means to convince someone to do something, as Daddy told. And this first example, uh, she convinced me to help her move. So when someone uses this, she talked me into helping her move. It gives you the impression uh, that the person didn't really want to do the activity, but somebody convinced them. But please, I really need your help. I will buy pizza, or maybe you could say the second example. My team talked me into bringing up the bonus at the staff meeting. So notice I use bring up, discuss a specific topic, the bonus. My team talked to me into bringing, bringing up the bonus now, because maybe discussing the bonus is a little bit of a sensitive issue and uh, nobody wants to do it, but wow your team convinced you, lucky you, so they talked you into it. And now the number 10. To stick around, to stay in a location for a period of time. Or yeah, to stick around as it's a sticky situation. No. So, um, yeah, I had a friend come and uh, he stuck around for a little bit. Helped me out with a few things. Or um, I had someone's family come over and they were getting ready to leave. And I was like, oh, just stick around for a little while longer. I'm going to make some dinner or have some coffee with me. Would you like to stick around a little while? That would be nice. I'd like the company. Go ahead, Saul. Yes. Could you read those examples? Oh, yes. Do you want to share an Uber? Oh, sure. I'll stick around for a little while and jump in with you. Oh, no. This is now. No, I'm going to stick around a little bit longer. Uh, I can't stick around very long because I have a meeting. Those were good. Those were good examples. Yes. So uh, then this number 10, to stick around. This is a must used phrasal verb. You can use it in a social setting or a prof professional setting. To stick around means as that he read, what is here to stay in a location for a period of time. So let's say you're at this beautiful park with a friend and after an hour or so, your friend has to leave and they say, do you want to share an Uber? Yes. And you say, no, I'm going to stick around a little bit longer. So, you're going to stay in a specific location, the park, for a period of time. It's unknown how long you stay. That doesn't really matter. Just the fact you're going to stay, I'm going to stick around a little bit longer. It's such a beautiful day. I'm going to stick around. Now you can also use this in the negative. I can't stick around very long because I have a meeting. Yes. Although 
it's a beautiful day. I can't stick around very long. I have a meeting to get back to yes. Yeah. So, so something to to add. No, I was just uh, yeah. No, I can't. I can't stick around. I have a meeting to get back to. Um, no. Yeah, or I, I can't stick around. Uh, my children need me to come back home and make dinner. Yes, yeah. great. So amazing. You helped with many uh, other and natural examples. You, you created it because you even uh, didn't know exactly uh, what we could. I could talk about, but you had really amazing examples to share with everybody that's uh, beautiful and yes. uh, so are you ready for your next quiz here are the questions hit pause now complete the quiz and whenever you're ready hit play and i share the answers so go ahead and hit pause now Here are the answers. So hit pause, review the answers, and whenever you're ready, hit play and come back to the video. So of course, share your scores, your score, and let's continue. Yes, and don't forget to subscribe in our channel and comment and bring to us something that you would like to learn uh, about the English language. Thanks, Daddy, for your company and for everybody's company. I really appreciate you. are always welcome. Yes, thank you, Saul, for uh, having me again. I, I really enjoy this. Uh, I have fun with all you guys. It's been a great, great time. Something definitely new in my life that we're doing this. So hope everyone has a great rest of their day and hope to see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Thank you for coming. Yes, you are always amazing. And I really appreciate all your uh, comments and uh, it's amazing because people can learn with a, uh, an American person that means in a native as our channel is named is called Junto com o Nativo yes that you are helping them also and uh, that's really great for everybody who follow us and watch our videos they can learn a lot in the way you talk too yeah thanks yeah. again and Kisses. Right. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.